Hello. It is yet another beautiful day, and I figured it would be the perfect day to film a little behind the scenes of my latest mural. It's literally 88 degrees right now, so it is very hot, and my hair is definitely going to frizz up, and I'm very, very thankful to have had that opportunity of doing a mural. This is actually my second mural that I've ever done. Um, my first mural was downtown where I live. Um, the scale of that one was much smaller, so this one was a much bigger space to paint on, but I think I definitely learned a lot from this experience. first project was done through school, so I had help from a professor and things like that, but as for this mural, it is very much entirely me. I kind of want to talk about quite a few things. I literally have a list because my train of thought will just go all over the place. I want to talk about the design process and the revisions that I made and kind of like how I made them as well as like the process, how I even painted the wall in the first place and kind of like how I dealt with like the disposal of like the paint and whatnot. The mural was um, painted outside of a seafood restaurant so the only request from the client was that it was related to the ocean in some way and I did come up with a few designs. Um, I had three total to show her and I just kind of made up a few different iterations of like my general idea of what I was picturing in my head and she just kind of told me what she wanted, if she liked the colors, if she didn't like the colors um, and just kind of like went from there and like I made a few revisions from that and this was the final design and I'm very very happy with it. I created it through Procreate on my iPad. Um, this is the first time that I fully created something for a client using Procreate. Um, most of the time I use Adobe products like Adobe Illustrator or Adobe Photoshop, but I really enjoyed using Procreate. I'm trying to get the hang of it. Um, this summer I worked a lot on Procreate just to kind of get used to the tools so hopefully I could use it in school this year. Before I even show process videos, I kind of wanted to give like a little rundown of my painting essentials. I'm gonna go in my little notes app and find the list. Especially when you're painting in the summer. I mean, summer is kind of like peak time for um, muralists to really like get their work done or like spring or like early fall. But I did this literally in the middle of summer and it was really freaking hot. So if you happen to find yourself in that situation, these are the best things for you. Number one is to wear waterproof shoes or I wore an old pair of sneakers for my first mural but I definitely just changed that completely and went with waterproof shoes. I wore these Birkenstocks. They're the just like the waterproof like rubber ones and there's still paint on them but they're really easy to clean. These were like the best for the project in general or like Crocs or something like that. It also like was super hot so like wearing sandals was like a must because just like having socks and sneakers on is just like is too much to handle on a hot summer day. Next would be definitely a baseball cap or some sort of hat to protect your face from the sun. I just found that it helped me paint the mural better in the first place. Like really getting to like see the wall without having to like be squinting all the time and like I just I just couldn't do it without it and honestly it's just you're in the sun all day you want to protect your skin on your face and just prevent sunburns or anything like that so that was definitely a must and to go hand in hand with the baseball cap is sunscreen I honestly don't go anywhere without my sunscreen I always carry either the Innisfree SPF but lately I've been using the native like I think it's like SPF 30 um, unscented sunscreen. Native um, unscented sunscreen is really really good. The ingredients are great. And lastly, a water bottle. I would bring some sort of insulated water bottle, just fill it to the brim with ice, and literally the ice will eventually melt. It'll be good. But you need to have some very ice cold water with you on a hot day, just because you need to keep yourself hydrated because you're going to be sweating a lot, you're going to be overexerting your body, um, it might not seem like it at first, but like you, you're squatting a lot and you're doing a lot of moving and it's just really essential to just keep yourself hydrated as you should do on a normal day, but especially especially on hot days when you're painting out in the sun. When I was prepping the wall, I used just like a mild dish soap and 
I was painting the wall outside of a restaurant, so I just asked for warm water and I just brought a little bucket with me and I was just scrubbing the wall using the mild soap. But the wall that I was painting on had a lot, a lot of old paint and I was trying to keep the budget very low so I wasn't going to use like paint stripper or like anything to like really get all the paint off. I was just going to try and like take a lot of the big flakes off and try and like smooth it out as much as I could. So to do that, I just used like a, like a harsh like grit. Like, it's almost like a sponge, but it's kind of like sandpaper at the same time. I don't even know what the heck they're called. They're just kind of like very useful for just smoothing down the wall. And also I used a wire brush to get into the holes and like really get like the old paint off as much as I could and just scrubbed it all down with soap and water before I went in with the primer. And I did, I think, three layers of primer. So honestly, it was, it was a lot, a lot more primer than I expected, but it's just good to just even out the wall completely. When it got down to actually painting the wall, um, the priming was done and all of that cleaning was done in one day. And then the next session was painting the background of the design. I This took honestly the longest. This was the longest session I did. Like I think it was like four hours of painting. Like And I just like straight painted for four hours. And of course I had the lovely help from my boyfriend Fernando literally could not do it without him but it was honestly so relaxing and just very it was literally just like adult coloring at that point I was just you know trying to make it as clean as possible I tried doing tape and I would think that tape would be so good for the curves in the background of the the mural but lesson learned that just did not work so I actually ended up going in with carpenter pencil and just kind of sketching out the design by hand because the wall had to be had to be stretched out a little bit the design because the wall was actually much longer than I originally had measured I think it was because there was like a little section of the wall that poked out and I just didn't take that into consideration when making the design and that was another lesson I learned but I ended up stretching the background a little bit but it was kind of difficult to do with the tape so I just ended up doing it with the pencil but it was honestly so beautiful in the end and I really was happy with how the background came out. Just for reference, the wall that I painted was roughly, I want to say it was like 23 feet by like 3.5 feet. It was a three color background and for each color I got only a quart of paint and the quart of paint was enough. That was more than enough for that size wall. It's better to just buy less and then get more if it's not enough than to waste your money on way too much paint because it's just not good for you because you're just going to have paint left over and also it's not good for the client because you want to be as cost efficient as you can for the client. The very last session was by far the most difficult um, and that was painting the actual sketches of the sea creatures from my design and that was just the most difficult because I was just like so nervous on it not coming out like the design because I didn't want to do like stencils or anything like crazy like that would take so much time to prep. I just wanted to just sketch it out with pencil and just kind of go in with it. And I ended up using the paint that I used to prime the wall as the white for the sketch so it kind of like worked cost wise. I didn't end up buying another quart of paint just to paint those little sketches and it turned out good. I will say it took not as much time as the background which was very surprising it literally only took me like two hours i think two and a half hours to paint the sea creatures when the background took me like four when it was finally done i put my little signature on the side and it was just a very proud moment to just have it all done and like finally see my creation in real life and i'm trying to make my vu proud because my vu also is like a painter. He actually painted all of the stripes on the buildings of the Madeira Feast. He's very, he's a very hard worker and a very creative person. I had big shoes to fill and I just felt very proud of myself and both my Grammy and my Vu told me how proud they are of me and that was just so I'm just so lucky to have people like that supporting my creative vision and of course like my mom my sister works at the restaurants so she was like always like hyping me up and it was just honestly such a great experience not to mention i took some friends of mine to eat dinner there after it was finally all done it's back to school time so my friends from college are back and i took them to eat dinner and they got to look at the wall and they also got to look at some of the menus that i redesigned for that same restaurant and it was just a very proud moment to like 
enjoy your creations with the people that you love in your life and it was just such such a beautiful night and it was just so lovely <laughs> Did you Did you morning? <laughs> oh yeah, we were just so funny. I saw a horseshoe the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a horseshoe That's funny. Do it again. <laughs> Does it taste good? That's so good. Quality. <laughs> There's so much here. I know. The, I don't know how many items are on the menu, but it's a lot. This is my proud, proud moment of Kato taking pictures. <laughs> and Monica's happy because of the salted butter. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Monica approved. That's not what I Bro is literally like done with this food, basically. When it comes to disposing of paint, it is definitely not good to just put that stuff down the gr down the drain. It is very bad for the environment and I tried to look up different ways of disposing of it and the best way I found is to use a small bucket per session and then once you have all that paint water you put it into another big bucket until you're done with the whole painting and then once you're done with the whole thing you either can use sand or like cat litter just to soak up all of that so that you can throw it in the trash because it is not good to be putting that stuff down the drain it is better to dispose of it like you would of other trash and also artists out there it is so important to know your worth and to really be fair to yourself, but also to the client. Um, it was very difficult for me to like price the mural in the end because I just loved getting that opportunity, but you also need to take into account that it's your time and your creative energy, and it's something that people want to pay for. It's not like you're not a burden for having people pay for that. And I just found that you really have to take into account how how long it took for you to do the design and how long it took for you to paint it, how many revisions you did, but also how intricate the design is too because I wouldn't consider the mural I did to be like very intricate but it was very time consuming but I don't think I would pay nearly as much as like these giant murals that you'll see like in obviously like big cities and stuff like that it was never it was not that level so I wouldn't pay to the, I wouldn't ask for pay to that level but I think it's just very important to just know kind of where your mural stands, like size-wise, how intricate it is, how long it took you, um, all of that stuff you need to take into account when charging for the mural. I hope I do many more in the future. I never ever saw myself doing murals ever in my life, so this is honestly so surprising for me to have even had done this project. Um, Going into the summer, I just kind of expected to have like my internship and work my part-time job and just kind of like enjoy the summer. This project just kind of came to me and I got to do so much work for that restaurant and it was just such a great, it was just such a great summer with them. I did the mural and then I redesigned their menu for them so now they have brand new menus and I got to work alongside a printer, like a local printer. It was just like such a great experience as a freelance artist. I just find myself like having these new opportunities and finding myself in these situations where I can progress as an artist. And I just think it's very important to put yourself out there. And although you might be intimidated by the project, because I definitely was intimidated by the size of the wall and like how much work they wanted, they wanted from me. And I just felt that I needed to do it. And... I'm just so glad I did because I just feel like I've grown so much this summer and I just can't wait for the school year and to learn more and hopefully have more projects this big in the future and maybe even bigger ones. I'm sure there'll be bigger projects in the future. But yeah, I hope you learned something from my little lists and from my footage of me painting my mural. And yeah, I will see you guys later. Bye.